It's a weekend in September, the season when stadiums are normally packed with cheering fans. But not this year. The coronavirus is forcing us to watch games at home and apart. But today, at Sun Devil Stadium, another type of MVP is playing defense. This is, this is our big cluster today. This one's our big push, so you can do it. Epidemiologist Megan Jean is measuring public exposure to COVID-19. The data she collects could be a game changer for slowing the spread. Oh yeah, I'm a huge sports fan, so it's, uh, it's a lot of fun to be here in the stadium in this beautiful space and, uh, and use it for a public health purpose, actually. Jean also serves on Arizona's pandemic modeling team, a statewide group of health data experts who are tracking daily case counts and predicting future infection rates. Um, if we're able to track the trends and sort of show an uptick and how the epi curve might be changing, people be, might become more aware of their behavior and how their behavior is really influencing the trends that we're seeing on the local level. But we also began collecting information right away on uh, testing availability because we knew that it was an issue if we were not uh, identifying all of the individuals who had COVID because some people couldn't access tests. I remember that they came out with initial report in April, which was terrific because what they did was they went through several different scenarios. I think there were five different scenarios and they basically said, these are the five various policy decisions that might be made over the coming months. And if you were to make decision A, these are what we would expect you to see in terms of the epi curve, the growth of the virus, and what you could expect to see in Arizona. Working with other researchers from across the state gave the modeling team a mix of regional perspectives and academic specialties. Like many people, I've been roped into COVID-19 uh, when it's not my primary expertise. I'm not an infectious disease um, expert, um, but I have expertise in chronic respiratory diseases and things of that nature. And so I had been modeling asthma in childhood and thinking about the cost effectiveness of various approaches to treat it. My methods were really focused on generating um, spatial type expectations for how the virus would spread. And so that's relevant because then ADHS requested that we work on county specific model projections. Because that's important because as we know, up in Northern Arizona, we have a really large expansive space, but a limited hospital system to serve all those people. National experts had already created coronavirus models but Arizona officials knew they needed Arizona-specific information. There was tremendous uncertainty about whether or not there would be a summer effect here. We know that flu generally subsides in the summer, but we didn't have any real scientific evidence to think that a coronavirus would. The other thing that's important is we know that social interaction patterns are very different in Arizona in the summer. It's hot and that makes it unpleasant for people to go outside and spend too much time outside. That can be good if we're worried about spreading disease at picnics and barbecues and those kinds of things, but if people are going inside, which we later learned uh, really has an impact on bars and restaurants and movie theaters, we were very concerned that we could have a, an opportunity for continued transmission through the summer, which we ultimately saw. Our magic number is 36 households today. We are at 132. 36 households. So. We have to go. I know you guys can do it. You guys are absolutely fabulous. And we will be here uh, supporting you and cheering you on. We got 30 yesterday, so this is Woo! within striking Woo! Despite being MVPs in the field of epidemiology, the modeling team felt strained by the stamina of their viral rival. We've all been working nonstop for several months. I would say that, you know, we started burning the midnight oil uh, in February and March. It's been really hard for me, just personally, trying to balance my, my, my kids and homeschooling with uh, the demands of, of the job over the six, six months. So, you know, I think, I think it's, it's hard for everybody who works in public health. You know, it's, uh, this has just been, it's just been a long, rough road. But their resilience was strengthened by the support they received from each other and their colleagues. Um, I'm also just so moved by the response that we've gotten from our volunteers. You know, we're in the middle of a pandemic and we've had over 350 volunteers out here this week, many of them working 
12 hour days um, out in the field in the heat um, approaching people and, and offering these antibody tests and so so I'm <laughs> I'm tired I'm exhausted but I'm also just really inspired by you know how hard our team has worked how hard our volunteers have worked it's hard to prepare to fight two or three wars at the same time you would think that dealing with the COVID situation would be enough uh, but a lot of the dynamics that emerged, both in terms of natural events and also political events, really just created an environment that was brand new, and we had to figure it out and reinvent it as we went through it. So, you know, so again, that kind of situation is best dealt with when you have colleagues that you can work with and you can trust. Each of our respective teams could have done much of our work on our own. I think coming together and kind of the cross-pollinization of, of ideas and um, uh, our own expertise strengthen each of our work. Hopefully, the success of this collaboration can be repeated, especially since more pandemics are likely in the future. It will be important to build those relationships before the emergency begins. And that's the key to any kind of emergency response. We had an extremely challenging situation in Arizona. Things did not go well and we had to stay the course and continue doing the work that we did. Um, and we've been noticed. The scientific community, the modeling community, um, the entire response community, I think has really noticed the work that's gone into, um, into this response. And it's interesting that we've done it independently as academic organizations and really came together with U of A and NAU so that our scientists could all work together, learn together, make tools together, make solutions together because in order to get you know, policy actions taken within the state based on the information we had, we needed to join forces and then communicate with the Arizona Department of Health Services and with Maricopa County and Pima County and the other organizations around the state in order to make these changes in real time.